to begin another one related to the take home exercise seven that I asked you to pursue. So take home exercise seven involved extending what we did in the previous uh the previous in-class work uh, in our previous session, uh, where we built a model of smoking, simple model of smoking, and it extended it in a couple of ways. Uh, what was the what was the main sort of uh, element of what we extended it with? Uh, yes, uh, the back. Yes, yes, heart disease. That's right. In your name, uh, uh, so hardy. Um, so it's already exactly right. We've said it with the representation of, of heart disease. And uh, we did that by adding another state chart. Now, uh, normally I'd like to, to show you a solution. And uh, I think because some people are just getting comfortable with the platform, I think I'm just going to do it in front of you. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just demonstrate it. You can see how I. I, uh, how I engage in this. So I'm going to go over. There's several steps to it. I have them here. Uh, first of all, I asked you to save it as a different version. Uh, I've done that here, version two. And now I said, go to the experiment area. Here are two experiments. These are our scenarios. And I set them to run for 100 years. So I have them run at stop time 100 here, OK? Uh, there we go. Uh, next, uh, I'm going to go to um, uh, add a state chart, which, as I said, dichotomously represents heart disease, meaning it represents it in a binary fashion. Either you have it or you don't, is the idea. Yes. Oh, I'm not sharing the screen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, key, key pointer. Unfortunately, our TA is... Uh, is is not able to be here this week, so um, Actually, it's especially yeah, valuable. Right now. So, Sorry, already so that's good, excellent. Okay, much appreciated. Um, okay, so we're going to represent this in a dichotomous way. So I'm going to add a state chart entry point called um, uh, heart disease state chart. Okay, um, great. And what is it going to have by way of states? So it's going to represent it dichotomously. Either you have it or don't. So what are the two states? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Deshadi. Yeah. So no heart disease or heart disease. Yeah, no heart disease or heart disease. Right. Um, so I'll say, sure, um, no heart disease. You could call it healthy heart. Maybe that's a little bit more uh, intentional revealing or evocative. And heart disease. Good. Um, so I'll put that there. And we said last time that we're going to assume that once one's heart has been damaged, that it remains in, in some damaged state. So what sort of transition would it would be between these? Yes, Ardalan. We need the transition that's the kind of shows us that they were looking for it. And good. That's uh, good. That's so we're gonna have this development like that. Okay. Now um what sort of transition is this right now? Okay. The timeout transition. So that would mean after exactly some period of time to be determined by the little bit of code you put here. And by the way, this is code. It's not just a number. You could put a draw from a distribution, for example, there. You could put you know, a value you read in from a database or whatever. Um, but we want to instead have a certain chance per year. The time unit of this model is years. So a certain chance per year, someone will develop heart disease. So what sort of transition would capture that? Right. A rate transition. Yeah, it's a hazard rate. So a certain chance per unit time. And this really builds on this idea of continuous time we emphasize. This time that this idea that time is, is a continuum. It's flowing on in a gradual way and things happen as quickly or as slowly as, as they need to. Um, now I'm gonna put in here some initial default rate and we're gonna update it. I'm gonna put 0.1 
as the rate. And this is a little bit confusing because it says years here. Um, but wait a minute. Oh, it didn't change this. Oh my goodness. Look at that. This is a this is a bad thing. It still says timeout. Uh-oh. Okay, something is funky. Um so, so let me do properties again. Ah, rate per year. Okay. Okay. Um, sometimes the UI doesn't quite get updated. I'm going to say rate 0.1 per year. How long on average would they have heart, would they be, have a healthy heart before they develop heart disease? If it's 0.1 per year, what is that implying? 10 years. 10 years. And where do we get that? One over, One over 0.1. Right, we're going to go over this in just a minute in a little bit more detail, um, but it's going to be an average time of ten years. If you have a rate of x, the average time before it happens is one over x. Or in general, I'll say a rate of. We like to use Greek letters for for constant, so a rate of alpha the average time before it happens is one over alpha. Please remember that. And it makes sense because a rate is has dimensions chalk. Chalk, ladies and gentlemen. Chalk. Um, it's, At the end. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, okay, great. Thank you. Um, uh, some of you probably wish I stayed under there, right? Um, so, so in general, if we have a rate, it's a unit probability per unit time. Probability, the dimension of probability. It's like number of heads over for coin flips over number of coin flips on both the the numerator and the denominator, you're counting coin flips. And so these two cancel. You can count coin flips in thousands. You can count them in millions. You can count them in one by one by one. Um, and the numerator and denominator will be the same thing. Um, if you do a million coin flips and you count that as one and, and, and you get 0.5 of them are heads, it would be you know, 0.5 here and it'll be uh, out of one total coin flips if you're measuring them in millions. If you're measuring them per coin flip, it will be 500,000 over, over a million. Either one, it's going to come to 0.5. The, the dimensions cancel because they're the same in the numerator and denominator. So you get something here that's what we call, and the, it goes by different names, unit dimension, or uh, it's, uh, it's commonly called, and it's somewhat of a misnomer, that it's of dimensionless. Has anyone heard the term dimensionless before? Dimensionless? Yes, a quantity that's dimensionless. Mm -hmm. Our world works by dimensionless quantities. Because our, the, the way the world works doesn't care what units we measure things in. So it has to be governed by dimensionless quantities, it turns out. And this is a dimensionless quantity. It's a quantity whose expression, to give its value, it doesn't depend on what units we measure it in. It's independent of the units. And there's something profound about that. That there are certain features of the world that govern its evolution. They have to be independent of, of the units we measure them. This is independent of units. It's fractional coin flips that turn out one. Fractions are dimensionless in general. If I said the fraction of this room here which was covered by these tables, right? I could ask you that. Would it matter whether, if, if you tried to figure that out, you would probably measure how big these tables are and you know how many meters long and how many meters wide, right? And you could do the same thing for the room, right? And the fraction you arrive at would be square meters over square meters, right? And the numerator will be the size of the tables, right? The, 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 the square meters occupied by the tables and the denominator will be the, the, the floor area of the room, right? 
it would be square meters over square meters. And you get a value, right? Maybe a point, point 0.4 or something like that, right? Now let's suppose someone else, some wayward American stumbling into the Canadian winter came here and were to do the same thing in feet. So they were to measure this in feet, all the, the square feet of, of each desk to figure out how many desks there are and, and the square feet of the room. Would they get a different number? No, it'd be the same number, right? Because it's square feet over square feet. Point one, point four. they'd arrive at the same thing. The fraction of things is independent of units. It doesn't matter if we measure it in square meters or square feet. You could measure in square miles if you wanted to do so. Right? This would have minuscule value as square miles or square kilometers. Or you could measure it as square microns or square angstroms. It doesn't matter the unit. It cancels if if it's a fraction. This is a fraction, it, it, so it cancels. So this is dimensionless, and the denominator here is time. So we're, we're talking about a rate. It's a value per year, a fraction per year that leaves, right? Do you understand that? A fraction per year that leaves? That's that. What fraction of these people leave per year? People without heart disease leave per year, right? Um, a fraction that leave per year. That's what unit the, the rate is. The rate is this. So, if you, so I'll call it alpha. It's a rate. Uh, so I'll, I'll put in parentheses a rate equal to that. What would the dimension of one over alpha be? Well, its dimension will be one over one over time. And this is in parentheses. It's one over, one over time, which is dimension what? Time. That's the mean time until you leave. Do you get that? So if you have a rate and you take one over it, it gives you a time. Does that make sense? Okay, so one over point 0.1, would mean 10 years because this is a per year rate. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. Um we're gonna we're gonna revisit. So this is the rate point one we're saying right now. Okay. Um if this were a rate of point two, how many years on average would it be until they develop heart disease? Mm -hmm. Point two? Five years. One over point two. If the rate were one, how long would it be until they develop heart disease on average? One year. One year. If the rate were two, how many how long would it be before they develop it on average? Half a year. Half a year. There's nothing inappropriate about it. It's a rate per unit time. Huh? So I mean it could be 10. It would just mean in one tenth of a year you develop heart disease on average. Does that make sense? Okay. Remember, I mean, we could pick different units of time, right? We could express time and days if we wanted to. And what was, you know, a high rate of fraction leaving per year would be a quite low rate of per day, right? Because the chance on any given day you develop heart disease is very small. Um, okay. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, that that was something we did, and we're going to come back to this. But let's let's continue to go on. Okay. So, um, here I I made it. Um, okay, I said make it initially 0 0.02 per year. So 0 0.02 would mean an average time to develop heart disease of what? One divided by 0.02 is. I, I like. I welcome people volunteering things, but 50, 50, good man. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, okay. Now we want to add a statistic here. What What's the job of statistics here? Um, 
yeah, the, the, they're in this case they're counting the number. Uh, yeah, it's it's giving us some out some measurement on the population. Okay, so where do statistics live? You tell me. This is there's a bit of administrative administrative of with any logic or implementation detail with any logic. Where do they live? Well, I I'd say properties is the lens by which you see them. I wouldn't say they live in properties. They live in they're associated they're in Maine. They're associated with the population. population. Thank you. I thought I was going to play hangman again. Okay, population. Here we go. Okay. All right, so here's the population. Here's our statistics. We'll go add a statistic. It'll be a count statistic, and it'll be called. Did I did I tell you what to call it? Uh, I guess I didn't tell it. Call tell you what to call it, but count. Um, so I'm gonna say hard, hard. Um, uh, yeah, count. Um, uh, gosh, hard. Uh. Yeah, uh, count with hearts is there's actually a, a term I'm gonna use. I'm gonna introduce it because it's just the right term. Now I'm trying to avoid it, but I'm gonna use it. Um uh heart disease prevalent case count. Okay, okay, that's a bit long, I know, but it's it's exactly what it means. If you say that to someone in the health sciences, they'll instantly know what it means. Yeah. Okay, so it's a count, and it's a count of people with a condition. What is that condition? They have heart disease. Okay, and again, this is a bit of administrative, sort of just implementation detail with any logic, but we have to specify for each person, do they meet, do they meet this criteria, eh? And how do we say that? Well, item, it's telling us this little, little bulb is telling us you can use item to refer to the agent. So whatever agent we're, that we want to judge, does it match the criterion or not? We call it a item, and we're going to say in state, and you have to say person dot heart disease. I originally said just say heart disease, but if you did this, it's going to be one unhappy camper. Um, and it's going to say, I don't know where heart disease is. What sort of heart disease? Is it doggy heart disease? Is it human heart disease? Is it heart disease and marmots? Um, whatever. So I'm going to I'm going to say person of heart disease. Yes. So uh, the person type is that just like in class in general, it's so big and yeah. every class. Here. So if the person right. does not tell this to go to the class. Here. That's, a, that's a static. It turns out at a technical level, it's a static variable in the class. Oh, okay. It's a static attribute of the class. It's not a, like the name, like the meaning of the term in the model heart disease. Um, that designation, that label is not specific to one particular person. My heart disease, your heart disease, her heart disease. No, no, no. It's 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 a designation that's common to all people. Whether you know what heart disease is. Um, the label of of heart disease is is something specific to humans here. And so so it's person dot heart disease. Um not item dot heart disease. It's not. It's not this particular person's heart disease. No, no, no. Person. Uh, it's it's a, a characteristic of personhood. If there were a dog in the model, I almost suggested a project involving support support animals for veterans with PTSD, and and there we'd have dogs and veterans, and and you know there could be a dog with heart disease. You folks probably don't know, but just uh, yonder, a uh, vet college, uh, one of my colleagues there studies heart disease and dogs. Yeah, believe it or not, there, there, there are people who, who look at chronic disease in dogs, and she looks at the effects of smoking on dogs, too. Um, so, uh, but <laughs> no, the dogs aren't smoking. They're not pumping up a storm, and they do not smoke hookahs, either. Um, they, they, uh, but they're exposed to the smoke from others, right? Um, and they can develop asthma, and 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 they can develop, um, uh, you know, lung lung problems of various sorts, including 
uh, including lung cancer when possible. Okay, so this counts the number of people with heart disease, okay? Um, there we go. Um, okay, so if we ran this model now, there we go. We're gonna run it and now we should be able to see as it runs, there we go. Um, uh, here we go. And if we go and we look at this uh, population here, we could see the number of people with heart disease is about 270, 280, going upwards of 300 now, et cetera. Okay. This is a one sorry population. Man, there's a lot of smokers there. Um, okay. Uh, great. So uh, we added the... Um, we added that uh, way of seeing outcomes from the model. That's an example of a model outcome. Is that outcome, the number of people with heart disease, the count of people with heart disease, um, is that exogenous, endogenous, or ignored? Endogenous. Why is it endogenous? It's produced by the model. It's generated by the model. It's an emergent outcome of the model, right? It comes about because the model state is evolving. Is it a governing factor of the model? Does the count of people with heart disease drive the evolution of the model? I want you to answer this carefully. Does the count of people with heart disease as a quantity drive the, the model directly? No, I, I, I hear a no, and, and remind me your name? No. Alex. Yes. Yeah, no, it has no effect on anything else. It's just a number. Yeah, it's, it's a number. It's, it's, it, it's a summary of the current state of the model. It summarizes something that does drive the model, which is the state of each person situated with heart disease. But the count itself is not itself driving. Like the count itself is kind of a summary measure. It's not itself driving the evolution of all, right? Okay. Um. So. So we have heart uh, heart disease represented, and and it's an outcome measure from the model. Okay, great. Um, this is very common. We have some state of the model, and we compute what are called sometimes. And I'm going to use a a term from philosophy, epiphenomenal. Uh, outcomes or or endogenous factors that are epiphenomenal. They don't govern the evolution of the model. They're a summary of it. They result from the model, but they don't drive it. So so these are not. So normally we think of state as leading to changes that evolve state, right? These ones are just are just. Um, and I'll see if I can turn this here so our remote viewers can see my see my uh can be offended by my the crudeness of my artistic uh creation but here we we think of state as evolving state if you have the state what happens next is a function of that state but then there are these things that are epiphenomenal that result from that state summarize it often are outcomes from it but they don't drive the state right there's no link back here to the evolution of the state. Okay, there's a lot of things like that in the world. Okay, um, so we have this epiphenomenal outcome, yes, and we ran it, and we saw that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run this at full tilt. Here we go, and we will uh, get it get it finished here, and we'll measure the fraction of people that have heart disease at the end. Boom, we ran it full tilt there. That's what the virtual button uh, does. Okay, fine. And at the final time, 100 years, how many people have heart disease? Let's go check it out. And the number is, whoa, 864. That is one bad situation, bad situation. Okay, um, okay. now, we're going to modify this. And this is where a bit of finesse comes in additionally. So what did I ask you to do? 
Yeah, this variable is important. This next step is so important for the purpose of the model. The purpose of the model was to look at the impact of smoking reduction efforts, efforts to reduce the burden of smoking to see how they ripple through to impact heart disease. Would this model by itself as it is now do that? Why not? There's no relation, right? This heart disease is totally independent of their smoking status, right? It, it, it's a solitary. It just evolves independently of their smoking status, right? Okay. So in order to capture some interaction between them, we need some mechanism by which, you know, their smoking status, their situation of smoking will end up impacting their heart disease. And we said, well, look, for color, we used a variable to, so their smoking status could change their color. So why not have a similar variable where they're, or conceptually similar situation where a, a variable can impact their, their heart disease status. Does that make sense? Okay, so hearing the no objections, I'm going to add a variable here, okay? And uh, I, I called it heart disease, Heart disease hazard rate. There we are. Hazard rate. Okay. And I'm going to put it near the thing um, which will depend on it. Okay. So, what sort of variable is this? It's a double. And I'm going to give it some initial value, which I'm going to say is 0.02. Um, okay. Just just by by reference there. Um, and uh, yes, mm -hmm. in the assembly, you didn't tell us actually put the 0 0.02. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, because you're going to be setting it for each of the uh, the the values over here. Uh, I'm not going to be filling in those level of details from now on. I expect you to be mature and and recognizing what what has to be done, and you should be able to make some decisions yourself. It doesn't matter what it is as long as we do the rest of them correctly. Okay, so. I'm making this rate depend on the heart disease rate. And then what's the key thing? This heart disease has rate has to be affected by what? By the, by the smoking state, right. Um, and here the most natural thing is to say, well, never smokers have a certain heart disease. Well, while you're a never smoker, you have a certain rate of developing heart disease. While you're a current smoker, you have a certain rate of developing heart disease. While you're a former smoker, you have a certain rate of developing heart disease. Okay, so how do we do that? What do we need to do? Uh, we need to write the heart disease rate is equal to uh, 0 0.5. Yeah, 0 .5. yeah, that's right, that's right. Heart disease, remember autocomplete is your friend. Heart disease hazard rate equals 0 0.005. Semicolon, because it's a statement, it's a command, do this. Yeah, okay, great. And then for current smokers, what did I say? Uh, I think I said 0.05, right? Yes, um, so 10 times higher. Um, and, oh, so why is this, why is this name not being shown? That's, that's kind of weird, look at that. Okay, so come on, uh, where, where's this name? Did I... That that's a, uh, <laughs> that's a bug. <laughs> yeah, it's a feature. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. And and I think for former smoking, it's this. Whoa. Um. Okay. So, so that that really troubles me. Like, hey, come on. Um. Uh. Okay. So this bothers me, but uh, I'm gonna come back to it. Um. Maybe I that's well. That's what I, I. But I think I looked, and it it wasn't. Um, it wasn't there. Uh, so, okay, come on. This is. I suspect maybe it got dragged up. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Let's talk about wayward. Um, okay. So, this is like the wandering smoker. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So now we we have set that and. So while we're in this state, we have this hazard rate applying. And so when we set this from then on, you know, this rate will be governed by, by that um, uh, hazard rate. 
But if they switch here, suddenly they have a higher rate per year of developing heart disease. So this transition will be governed by, by that rate. And if they quit while they're in this state, it'll be governed uh, by, by that rate. And so their chance for developing heart disease will be contingent on their, their smoking status. Okay, um, so now let's go run this model. Um, a population a thousand, and we're going to run this, and we will run it again at full tilt. Come on, and uh, and then we will go go here and uh, nine hundred eighty four. Oh my goodness, look at that. Um, okay, we're capturing the fact that smoking greatly increases your risk of heart disease. This was uniformly 0.02 before. And now we're captured the fact that if you're here in current smoker, there's a high prevalence of current smokers. Those reds are current smoker, right? Now, now a lot of them are going to develop heart disease. Okay. Um, so uh, I think with that, um, uh, we, you know, we, wrap up the exercise seven. Was there any question on exercise seven about what I just did? People comfortable with that? Yes, so uh, Mr. Deshati. Yeah, I, I couldn't get the last like 60. I couldn't, I couldn't answer it. Right. The last uh, 60? No. Uh, if a person no. starts without heart, to, oh, or to remain in the ne never smoking state and not change, how long would it take on average to develop heart disease? Okay, good, good. Thank you for bringing this up. So if they started here and they weren't to change, so if, if this were a rate zero, for example, um, uh, and they were to be here, how long on average would it take for them to develop, to develop, to become, uh, 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 to develop heart disease on average? 200 years. And where did that number come from? It's one divided by 0 0.005, right? This is half a percent, right? Half of one percent, point oh one, um, and so a percent would be one out of a hundred. This is one out of two hundred, right? Okay. What if they remained? What if they were here and they remained here without changing? How long would it take on average? Twenty years. Twenty years, right? And here it would take how long, on average? Fifty years. One over point oh two. Okay. Remember that and you'll do well. You'll do well. Um, okay. Yes, question. Tony. For person five and like seven, you're asking for the fraction of people. So that be the yeah. number of people divided by the total population? Yes, that's right. Um, now, there's actually a really slick way to do it. Do you want to see the slick way to do it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Far be it for me to deny you opportunities to see slickness in action. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I was just dividing my head because it's a thousand people. Now, after what I'm going to do next, you're going to be glad for the slick way of doing it because it's going to get more complex to calculate. Right now, it's easy because we have a thousand people, 964, 964 divided by a thousand. 96.4%. Um, okay, so, um, but if we have a changing population, you know, it's gonna get more complicated. Okay, so let's let's do the, let's do the slick way. Okay, so we're gonna get a population. Here we have this, um, what would be a way, you tell me, what would be a way to, <laughs> To compute the fraction of people. This is kind of limited, right? We can count, or we can sum, or we can think of average, or we can do min or max. But can anyone think of a clever way to use one of those to compute the, the fraction? What is a fraction? How can you express a fraction? Yes, Dad. Uh, yeah, I don't really play around with it, but an average seems like. Man, you are on top of it. Not the first time, I might add. Um, many times. So good, good man. That's exactly right. An average, an average is like an, an average 
could, you could do an average where you count people who do have heart disease as a one, and people who do not have heart disease as a zero, right? Um, and you take the average over the population of it. Imagine you had 10 people, right? Imagine one of them had heart disease. First nine, zero, 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 and the 10th one is one. And you take the average over it, what is it? Yeah, it's 0 0.1, right? Uh, one out of 10, which is exactly what you want. And as they say in England, Bob's your uncle, right? Um, so I kid you not, <laughs> you don't believe me, go, go, go Google it. Um, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna add in another um, population statistic. This will be heart disease, I'll say fractional prevalence, um, most most folks in epidemiology would just say prevalence, but fractional prevalence will communicate it. It's going to be the average of, and is there a condition? Are we going to only count it for certain people? Are we going to only count it for males or, or for people above a certain age? No, we're going to count it for everyone. Yes, or one. So that you need kind of a condition. So it needs to check if it is true or false, if it's one or zero, right? No, no, no. We're going to take an average over everyone. We're going to count people who have it as one and who don't have it as zero. So we're going to say if they're in the state of heart disease, the value we're going to take the average of is what? I said it earlier. One. Indeed, Matthew says it. And otherwise, it is zero. That's an expression. That's a formula. We don't have to need a semicolon. It's, we're not telling you to do this. We're not issuing a statement. It's an expression, as, as we say in computer science. The, the formula. If you, if you want to be um, pretty about it, you can put the whole thing in a, in, in a, whoa in um, in uh, parentheses if you wanted to. But so, what does this question mark mean? Somewhere in the dim recesses of your memory, you should have a memory of what question mark is. Harriet, yeah? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like a condition or a if, right? But it's not an if statement. An if statement would say, like, this is true. Do these things as commands, right? Statements. Otherwise, do those things. No, no, this is for values, right? So if this is true, if this person has heart disease, the value is to use will be one, otherwise zero, right? Okay, so let's let's run this. Okay, um, this is a what's called the ternary operator, and I know for some people it's their enemy, but for me it's it's my friend. No, don't think it's not my only friend. Um, okay, um. Okay, great. Um, category theory is my friend as well. I'm, I'm pleased to say. Anyway, um, okay. Uh, so the fractional prevalence is 0. 0.984, which exactly of course is 984 divided by 1,000, right? Short and sweet, and it's not NP complete. Okay, people didn't seem to like that. Um, okay, um, so. So that's good. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so that was exercise seven. Any other questions on that? And then we're gonna add to this model. Okay. Um, so I'm going to stop that recording because that's exercise seven. And we'll